to Fully Charged 2022, and we're here with Duncan Forrester. You are the Chief Communications Officer of Volta Trucks. We're very curious about Volta because you're doing some really interesting things and coming to market really quickly. But first, tell us about this. What are we looking at? So, in front of? <laughs> so this is the Volta Zero. Yeah. This is the world's first purpose-built, full electric, uh, inner city urban distribution vehicle. Yes. It's really specifically designed for that clear purpose of getting goods into a city centre, zero emissions, but also really addressing the safety issues that exist in city centres with vulnerable road users as well. Which leads us straight on to this massive glass house you have. Yes. And, and, and we said, should we film it in the cab? And you said, it might be busy. <laughs> and, we, and we can see it really is, because everyone's really curious about this. And this looks unlike conventional trucks. This is a key part of your vehicle. Well, it, it fundamentally is. And when I when I said introduce the vehicle as the world's first purpose-built full electric vehicle, yes. it's the purpose-built bit that's the important bit. So when we started designing the vehicle, what we looked at were the issues that exist with today's commercial vehicles. Right. Um, and that's about, yes, diesel and CO2 and particulates and all of these other issues that we need to deal with with diesel. But actually, when you look at a, a vehicle that's operating in city centres, it's all about safety. So if you take Transport for London's own statistics, they'll tell you that 4% of road miles in London are travelled in trucks. But 26% of pedestrian fatalities and 78% of cyclist fatalities are attributable to trucks. So what we have to do is basically get to a situation where we can remove the diesel, yep. but actually design a truck that works well and integrates well in inner city environments yes. and really address that fundamental health and safety issue of right. trucks in streets. Okay. So regarding safety, I, I, I presume we've got quite a lot of automation and cameras. I can see there's a camera there, there's a camera at the front of the truck as well, camera at the back. Are, the, are these cameras part of is, is some automation in here, some safety uh, procedures? So, so fundamentally, this is all about giving the driver the best visibility that they possibly can. So we've got 220 degrees of visibility for the driver, which is revolutionary in the truck world. You've got a driver that sits at the eye height of pedestrians and cyclists, but it's all so the true. Well, I just, I've just twigged oh, what yeah, you it's, said. It's, it. it's as low as a car, isn't <laughs> it, it? It absolutely is. And it that sounds silly now that I've said it. Comes back to the purpose-built part that you know we haven't yeah. got that normal piece of real estate where your internal combustion engine sits because what we've right. done is we've completely repackaged the vehicle so the drivetrain is all on the rear axle. Right. So we've got Europe's first use of an e-axle. So you've got electric motor, transmission, and axle yeah. all in one compact unit. Yeah. We've got the, the, the batteries between the ladder chassis, right. safest place to house batteries. Yeah. And what that means is you've got complete free range to make a cab yeah. as safe as you possibly can yeah. for the driver and for those around. So the driver, the eye height of the driver the is straight to the eye height it's here, isn't it? of, yeah, it's of pedestrians around the vehicle, cyclists around the vehicle. Uh, and you just, when you're driving the vehicle, you've just got that direct visual communication with, with, a, uh, with somebody outside the vehicle just to give them that nod to say, I've seen you. I've seen you, don't, yeah. don't worry about and it. And is, yeah. is that why you've gone for this central seating position? Yes. So, so the, the, they've got both mirrors perfectly in tune. You don't get that blind... I presume you're not getting the blind spot you get well, normally. Well, so... so, so, so it, a number of reasons but firstly yes exactly you could, you've got exactly the same judgment to make uh, down either right. side of the vehicle but if you think about this vehicle as a vehicle that's designed for inner city and urban distribution a driver is going to get in and out of this vehicle 10 20 30 times a day what we need to do is to make sure that that driver always steps down onto the pavement whereas if you right. think about a right hand drive vehicle the driver gets out always into the traffic, yeah. which of yeah. course is not safe. And the driver also swings open a wide door yeah. at the point where a cyclist is coming past them. So sliding doors. So sliding doors. Um, yeah. and the, the whole thing is designed to maximise the safety of those yeah. operating in and around city centres. Can I jump in, Nick? Is that yeah, right? yeah, you go in. I'm going to so, jump in. What, 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 one question <laughs> I've got... Whoa! <laughs> you run their suspension seat. Their suspension so seat. What, 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 <laughs> one, one question I want to ask about, about this is, we often see that people, when they talk about electric trucks, they always say, well, trucks have a, a maximum capacity of what they can handle. Does that make any difference with the batteries, or is it basically a, a straight swap for what a, a, an engine weighs and all the? Well, we're, basically, we're a six, th th this is a 16-ton truck, and that 16-ton truck gives us about eight tons of payload. 
So you're not really making sacrifices. Uh, right. Um, but if it's not quite enough, we've got 16 tonne, we've got 18 tonne, but we've also this week announced 7.5 and, and 12 tonne vehicles as well. So 7.5, significantly smaller than this in terms of height and all dimensions? Yes, yeah. yeah. But, but if you think about it, basically the concept of Russian dolls, right. you've, you've got a, a vehicle with all of the same okay. safety uh, and, uh, and sustainability attributes, but in a smaller package. And just all the things like when I just got in, Nick, I could see these big screens here on the left and right, like a, a souped up version of, uh, you know, you're getting digital wing mirrors on cars now, but yeah. I see it more and more on trucks. Even older trucks are being retrofitted, I see on the road, so clearly it's a big safety advantage. So you're, you're, those are taking a feed from a camera so, here? So these, are, which of course, in all weather conditions, great visibility. But you've also not got a very large mirror here of course. to take a cyclist with. Yes. So you've, you've yes. basically taken all of that out of the, the cyclist pathway. Yeah. And, and I, I, I'm assuming for, for a, from a trucking point of view, the amount of money they save on not replacing wing mirrors, because it's one of, the, <laughs> one of the most hit items, I think, on a truck. It is. But, but it also, is. so I used to live in southwest, sort of Richmondy area, you know, Twickenham, and I would cycle into town, into Soho, which is about six miles, right? And genuinely, when you live in London, cycling you want to cycle because it's quicker than the tube and it's good exercise. Genuinely terrifying. Like, genuinely terrifying to cycle around London. And I was always very cautious. I only got knocked off once. That was by a London black cab, not a, not a truck. But it, it seems crazy to me that someone hasn't done this before. So this is, this is why you're, you've got a real sense of urgency at oh, Walter. Very much so. I mean, we, we, we will have designed a vehicle all the way through to the production of a vehicle yeah. in about 24 months. Right. And, and to do that, we're working at enormous pace. But we need to do that to get trucks on the street to start making that difference for cyclists, for pedestrians, but also for the environment and the air quality issues that we know exist. So, okay. what, we, we need to ask the headline figures. What's the range of one of these? <laughs> So, so range is 95 to 125 miles. OK, and how does that correspond to the average last mile delivery truck? What oh, do they normally do? more than sufficient for a vehicle that does inner city and urban logistics. This is a vehicle that's going to be coming from a depot out of town into a city, doing a route round the city and heading back to that depot, and that's where it's going to be doing all of its charging. And, right. and, the, and the charging infrastructure on this, is it, is it a standard CCS or is it just a commando socket? How, how are they charging? So it'll be packages? CCS and it will take AC or DC charging. Um, so if you... If you need fast charge, it'll charge to full in uh, in about an hour. OK, and I presume 22 kilowatt AC? For yes. The, yeah. So do you want to just talk us through the vehicle a bit more? So we've seen this wonderful glass house and this cab here, and I see the uh, the lightning The lightning. Yep, you've got your charging on, point. On the side, so that, yep. makes, that makes it nice and obvious. Nice little zero written here in some nice zero CO2 and zero NOx, which is, re which is really nice. But this is the interesting thing. You are reinventing the truck, but also a lot of it, like, why haven't others done this first? Because, like, they're truck tyres, they're truck wheels, you know, you've not had to reinvent well, I, I think, those things. But, it, but if you're an existing OEM, you come at this having invested a very significant amount in your architectures and your platforms, and so, yes, they're making steps forward in the electrification, yeah. but they're doing it from, a, from an existing architecture, which we know is not a vehicle that integrates well into right. city centres. The benefit that we bring of that ground up design is yeah. that we can bring zero emissions, but we can also start addressing this health and safety issue that exists with trucks on the road. Well, I've, I've just noticed another camera. More yep. cameras. So it, Even more it, cameras. It's that 360 bird's eye degree, a 360 degree bird's eye that, yeah. uh, that it'll give you. And this is the terrifying bit, Nick, when you are cycling in London and you are, you know, some cyclists I do, I used to see put themselves in danger. Not That doesn't mean they should get knocked off ever, but they, you know, not always the best cyclist. But it's that moment when you're coming past a truck and, and you're at about this point and yeah. it's genuinely pretty scary because you think can the driver see me but but from those ca from those cameras I mean you, you you can see there are there are really we have minimized the blind spots to absolutely nothing. And, and I've also it's, noticed I mean you can tell obviously you've spent a lot of time on the design I mean, I mean just that most trucks you see that aero design flip at the front to, he to help <laughs> with drag yeah. the, the actual trucks been made with that aero design Streamlined and it's straight away at the front. Yeah. Martin's looking nice. at me like, oh, I don't know what he's on about. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Just tell us a little bit about how you get this to market quickly because, you know, we've seen EV companies 
start up and then making a vehicle is fabulously difficult because you've got to build factories and things. Uh, everyone's got their own way. What's your way? So our, our, our way really is to take the world's best componentry available yep. and actually integrate it into that, that vehicle. So what we're doing in order to get to market as quick as we can is to take uh, an established world-class battery from Proterra in, yep. the, in, in the US, take a world-class e-axle that already exists from, from Meritor in the US and bring it all together. Uh, and we're doing that in a, in a contract manufacturing facility in Steyr in Austria. Uh, and so really using those world-class partners yeah. who already have that proven track record is how we get to market as quickly as we do. So the, the idea of contract making things is, if anyone, anyone watching isn't quite you know, sure if that's, is that normal, like I had a Jaguar I-Pace 18 months ago, that's not made by Jaguar. No, it's, it's, made, it's, it's made in Austria. Uh, but Austria, it's made by Magna. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, very, very common in automotive. Yes. It's a great way of coming, coming to market. And that's a great So, a great so, so when, will these, when will the first deliveries of these orders be shipping? So we, we will be building, uh, we, we, we've already built 25 uh, the, of the first road going prototypes and those are currently going through testing. We've done cold weather testing in the Arctic. We're, we're really going through engineering testing now. We build a second generation of those prototypes uh, uh, over the autumn and yeah. those vehicles will be used for customer evaluation and then the first vehicle, first vehicles for, for customers get built early next year in Austria. Wow, okay. And front wheel drive, rear wheel drive? Rear wheel drive. So rear wheel drive. E-axle e all separate. at the back. And there is not, so there's no, so there's there's nothing to join the two. There's no. There, you, we've done it's, away it's with, the, with we've done away with the with the uh, the prop shaft, yeah. and that gives us the, the, the real estate for the batteries. How wonderful! That's amazing. Do you want to dive in there? Is it free? Well, I'm so cold. I might sit in here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh. Anything else we should be looking at inside that you want to point out for us? I mean, there's a lot of screens I can see already. So basically, what you've got here is a completely new and innovative driving experience. You've yeah. got your you've got your, ca your your camera mirrors here, and as you can see, you've got the, the the wide range and the and the and the much narrower range. But then fundamentally, you've got a completely reinvented driver experience, reducing the cognitive overload um, of, of driving and really serving that driver what they need when they need it to do their job. Yeah. So. Is this chassis carbon fibre? That's carbon fibre. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow! Okay. The, 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 as well. There's a, there's a oh, lot of carbon fibre goes into the structure of the cab to reduce weight uh, and, so and improve more rigidity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, th th this is a this is a demonstrator vehicle. Yeah. Uh, so this is a this is a, the, the first one-off demonstrator we built, and these composites down here yeah. were a, a world first because this is flax. So, oh, this, yeah, is, so this is this is flax and biodegradable resin composite. Wow! Um, now we're working towards that in production, yeah. but because of the technology involved, you, you can't actually industrialise yeah. that at the at the uh, uh, at the amounts that production volumes that we need at the moment. So interesting. Two cameras up here as well. Different, that, that, different angles. So, th so this gives you your two lenses on, oh, on here. So again, what, what, wide, a... wide range and narrow range. Sure. That's, yeah. yeah. So much more than the human eye can see. Yeah. Hey, what do you reckon, Nick? You having a little play? I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a one-off, don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, ju it just goes to show that how traditional truck manufacturers just haven't evolved into... I mean, well, I'm sure that, they're working that, that, on stuff. Well, that, but... that, I've, I've sat in trucks before. They're not hospitable places to sit in. They're, 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 they're very cramped. There's not a lot of room in them. Yeah. Um, and they're not, that, that feels like a nice place to sit. Well, yeah. I mean, what, what we're trying to do, and one of the aims when we started, was to actually recognise that driving and truck driving is a profession that we want to bring a new generation, a new demographic into. So if we're going to do that, we actually need to make a premium working environment for a driver, rather than that experience that drivers have today, which is you know, climbing up into a cab and, and then spending all day in a less than inspiring environment. Yeah. Actually, if we can create a much more premium working environment for drivers where they're going to spend a very long period of time yeah. and also get in and out in a step up rather than a climb up and down. I mean, you know, one of the most serious health and safety issues with truck driving is knees and ankles right. where you're jumping down many times a day and you know that, that doesn't last long. Well, this is this is so cool to see. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, it's enormously popular, uh, and uh, I'm sure we've had to use lots of shots in this video of when people are walking in, 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 <laughs> in and out. So, um, yeah, really, really popular stand. If you're watching this over the weekend, come and check them out. And if not, then check out uh, Volta online. And thank you very much yeah, for joining us. Thank you very, very much. Nice. Cheers. Thanks so much. Thanks.